Okay, so if you hear his screaming and hollering uh, in the in the vicinity, that's my husband. He's watching a BC Lions football game right now, and I think they're in the playoffs, so it could turn out a little dicey. We'll see. everybody thanks for joining me again today for this short little video hopefully crossing your fingers short I went and bought, I went and bought another lens I knew this would happen as soon as I sold my Fuji with the fixed lens I knew the gas would hit again gas gear acquisition syndrome I knew this would happen but you know we're at this point um, I have to do this because when you spend a certain amount on, the, on a camera and then you don't invest in good glass, aka lenses, it's kind of defeating the purpose of the things. So let's recap again. I bought the A6700 from Sony in order to be a, a perfect hybrid camera for both photos and videos. And I've had this camera now for over a month and I think it's it's fantastic for that. It's what I wanted my camera to be like to begin with. Like the Fuji X100V is a great camera, but it was only really great for taking pictures. And even that, uh, as I am now finding out, has not always been uh, perfect because now you're comparing it to this autofocus that the Sony has, but that's besides the point. So a perfect hybrid camera to do both photos and videos. And in order to take great videos in this condensed studio that I'm calling my own, I needed a wide angle lens and I wanted an f1.4. And there was two options for me. One was the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 and one was the Sony, the own Sony 15 millimeter f1.4. And from what I was reading, the Sony for video was just a little bit better. It was twice the price. But it was a little bit better. So I thought this is the only lens I'm gonna buy for talking head videos and it's also a little bit smaller than the 16 millimeters so if I do want to take it with me I'm not gonna have a bulky lens with me. So I got the 15 millimeter and I didn't regret it. It's a great lens. It's snappy. It's uh, it's I think it's very resistant so it's making the whole camera body suitable to go outside when the weather conditions are not great like today landscape photography that is dear to my heart and I got the filter adapters to put like the ND filters on and the polarizer and all that. The next lens I bought was the Sigma 18 250 millimeter f 2.8 lens because again great all-around lens and zoom lens is a tool. It's not a lens that I would grab and enjoy working with. A zoom lens is is amazing if you just want to bring one lens you just bring that one lens and that's it and then I went and bought the Sigma 56 millimeter f1.4 and that lens was amazing that's a fantastic lens that just gives you this depth of field that you cannot have with a phone camera you know iPhone photography, it's this fake shallow depth that they give you with this blurred out background. It's, it's not even going to come close to what an f1.4 lens can give you on an APS-C camera. And that's why so many people buying the full frame cameras now because they want that shallow depth of field, that bouquet that everybody's dreaming about. But because I wanted to stay with an APS-C camera, I didn't want to make that step towards full frame, more money for lenses, more money for the camera body, etc, etc, bigger, whatever, bigger, more expensive. We talked about this before. So that 56 millimeter, great size lens, uh, not too big, a little bit heavy because of all the glass that's in it. And I used it for about a week, week and a half, and I just couldn't use it the way I, I needed to use it. You want the low light f1.4, aperture to take pictures of people inside a building when you don't have a lot of light and it was just too narrow. 56 millimeter is just too 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 close. I literally would have to go into the next room 
to be able to take a picture of my husband eating his dinner or whatever you want to take. So that wasn't okay. That wasn't great. But I just loved that shallow depth of field and these sharp, sharp pictures and not one ounce of chromatic aberration. No purple fringing on anything. Purple fringing, green fringing, no fringing. Like zero fringing. And the lens was not too, too expensive. It was 529 Canadian dollars. Again, hello Sony. That's why I moved to the Sony universe because the lenses are just cheaper. I mean, I can now get lenses from other manufacturers for Fuji. And I didn't really think about that before I bought this camera, but I'm really happy with Sony now. I'm stick with Sony. So I just couldn't keep that a 56 millimeter lens. It was just too restrictive for me. And I knew I would use it for photography, for mostly portrait photography, and that would be it. So do I really want to spend with tags close to $600 on this lens? No, I needed something that was more suitable for the style of photography that I'm doing. And then this little TT Artisan lens came into the equation, an f2.8, just like the Sigma zoom that I got. Great little lens, fantastic image quality, super duper sharp. Yes, the colors are a little bit muted. Yes, the corners are a little bit dark. Yes, the, the picture overall is a little bit dark and a little bit flat, but for the size and the cost, it was $209 plus taxes here in Canada. But while I really appreciated the small, small, small form factor of this amazing little lens, I, mean, I, I didn't feel I wanted to take it as much as I thought I would take it. I will bring this camera everywhere with this lens attached to it. And that didn't happen. And I have to tell you the truth, after a few days, I'm I'm having issues every once in a while that the camera actually freezes with this lens on it. And I haven't been able to update the firmware on that lens because they don't allow firmware updates on Macs for TT Artisan. So I have to wait until my IT guy comes back at the office and I'm gonna try to do it with a PC and I don't know, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna wait until next week. And if the firmware update doesn't happen, I think I'm gonna send it back because I bought another lens. I ended up buying the Sigma 30 millimeter F 1.4, but it's only a 30 millimeter, not a 56. Now, again, that's a 27, that's a 30, pretty much the identical focal range. Karen, why did you do that? Because F 2.8, f 1.4 and the shallow depth of field the beautiful images the blurry background the bokeh on this thing is beautiful not as good as a 56 millimeter because with a wider angle you're almost approaching the subject and the background more it's kind of hard to explain but the wider the angle the less blurred out background anyway i wanted a lens that had similar bokeh to the 56 millimeter from Sigma, but wider. And a 30 is great. 30 is actually a great, great portrait lens that is close to, it's like 45 millimeters on the full frame. So that's actually pretty close to what the human eye sees. And it makes for very nice portraits. Not a lot of distortion, nice blurry background. Everything works really well. So I bought this lens last weekend I'm having so much fun taking pictures with this lens because there's so much background separation and it's just a great lens to take with you. Yes, it's a little bit bigger than what I would like. By the way, it was cheaper. It was like $369. For the same amount of money that I spent for this 56 millimeter, I can now have two lenses, like this really tiny TDs are 27 millimeter and this a little bit beefier 30 millimeter. So I have options. So now I have four lenses already. Oh my God. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if I keep them all. I have to stop. I know I'm still missing a macro lens and I know I'm still missing like a long focal range, like a 200 millimeter or something, but I'm, I think I'm good for now. I just want, I want to stop spending money on lenses. So yeah, Sigma 30 millimeter f 1.4. If you can't get any lenses for your camera system, get the smallest number behind that f that you can possibly afford. That's what gives you that creative freedom, that 
the creativity that you want to take pictures with or videos, that cinematic look on your videos. I mean, my, my background is not as blurred out as I wish it would be, but it's blurred out enough to be able to tell you, yes, this was not shot with an iPhone. So anyway, here is the quick update that I want to give you about yet another lens that I bought. Maybe I'm going to return a 27mm from GT Artisan. Maybe I'm going to keep it because it really wasn't that expensive. But if I don't use it, we'll see. Got some accessories for my new camera. I'm going to have a video coming up about that because, you know, a girl needs to accessorize their things. So otherwise, it's not going to be fun. For now, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope uh, it was helpful in some ways. And I really, really hope to see you again in my next video. Bye. Oh,